By analysing the waves given off by earthquakes, scientists have managed to determine the structure of the Earth. And it actually looks a little bit like this. So around the Earth there is a, a mixture of gases which is called the atmosphere, which we're going to talk about more in the next video. The part where we live is actually incredibly thin compared with the rest of the Earth, and that is known as the crust. And this is where all of the materials we use, all the rocks, all of the, the, the metals and fuels and everything else um, are found. The next layer is called the mantle. And the mantle is a very, very uh, viscous liquid. People think of it as a, as a solid, but it can kind of flow it's somewhere in between the two. Um, it, it's, it's very hot um, and it actually allows parts of the crust to move. In the centre of the earth, we've got the core. There are two sections of this. The outer core is actually a liquid. It's made of nickel and iron. And because the pressure is so great, even though the inner core is even hotter, it's actually a solid. If you were to look at the crust from above, um, you would see a map of the Avron Atlas, which would look like this. You'd have all the continents, which are um, the yellow uh, outlines here. However, underneath that, the different sections of the Earth's crust are split into different sections called tectonic plates. And I've sketched the outlines of some of these plates here. And the first person to actually notice um, some of the patterns which led to the discovery of these was a guy called Alfred Wegener. And he spotted a few things. The first thing he noticed is that the edge of South America here looked almost like it could fit into the outline of Africa here, just a bit, well, a bit like a jigsaw puzzle. So he was quite intrigued by this. And he also spotted some other, um, some other similarities as well. And he thought that maybe these two, um, these two were at one point joined up. So he did some experiments and he, he looked at the rocks deep down in the, in the ground on the coast here and on the coast of Africa here. And he found that before a certain point, the rocks were all the same. He also started to look at the fossils within those rocks and he found that, uh, surprise, surprise, the fossils were the same too. So the fossils, um, on the coast here, before a certain point, quite deep down in the ground, were the same as the fossils there. And he concluded that at some point, these uh, continents must have been joined up. And he came up with um, an idea that at a certain point in the past, all the continents were joined together in one big supercontinent, which he called Pangaea. Which I've spelt wrong. So, um, he actually couldn't prove this. He had no e explanation about how on earth the continents had got from a joined up position and how they had spread out. So his peers, his people around him, didn't believe him. You know, it was it was quite a bold claim to say that these massive, you know, hundreds of millions of ton continents had managed to move. So other scientists came, came up with different theories. And one of them was that the continents were originally joined by some form of bridge, some form of land bridge which connected them and allowed animals to move uh, between the continents. And their idea was that for whatever reason, this land bridge has collapsed or sea levels had risen and got rid of that land bridge. But Wegener didn't believe that. Unfortunately, he was never able to prove his theory about um, how, the, how the continents had moved apart. And it was only much, much later that the, the theory of continental drift was discovered. So scientists have now managed to prove that the continents, uh, the tectonic plates are moving at a very slow rate of just a few centimeters a year. And what they found is that it works like this. So the core of the earth is extremely, extremely hot. And what that does is it heats up the bottom part of the um, of the mantle here. Because the mantle acts a bit like a liquid or a fluid, um, that causes convection currents in the mantle. So the base, the hotter parts of the mantle become less dense and rise up. And that causes your tectonic plates here Okay, in this case, they would separate. So it's caused by convection currents in the mantle. And it's driven by the heat from the core, which is caused by radioactive processes. So, remember, this all came about much, much later on. 
these convection currents um, and the idea of continental drift or the actual uh, explanation behind continental drift was discovered. Wegener predicted that that's what he thought was happening, but he had no evidence. And there were at the time there was other um, there were other theories because Wegener did not have enough evidence to prove his theory at the start. In this case here, I've shown the tectonic plates moving apart, but it doesn't necessarily have to be just that direction. At other points in the Earth's crust, um, we get convection currents driving plates closer together. And when that happens, you've got two, again, million of, millions of ton uh, pieces of rock driving into each other. It actually leads to mountains forming. You might, also get, you might also get points where there's two tectonic plates sliding past each other. Imagine if these were two plates and this one's moving that way, this one's moving that way. This actually leads, up, leads to the buildup of pressure. It's very difficult to predict when that pressure will be released when the plates will suddenly jolt apart, but that leads to earthquakes. An example of this is in San Andreas in America. The San Andreas fault line has very, very frequent earthquakes.